So in this video we're going to discuss higher partial derivatives and as an example of this we're also going to be discussing mixed partial derivatives which is a new aspect of differentiation when you have more than one variable. So let's start off by looking at a function f which is a function of x and of y, two variables and I'm going to choose the function to be x multiplied by the cosine of x times y. So if I want to calculate the derivative of this with respect to x, so the partial derivative df dx, then what I have to do is to look at the function which I'm going to differentiate and see where the x dependence is. And I see that it occurs in two places, here and also here. So I have a product of terms of this and this, so I have to use the product rule. So when I differentiate the x, I'm going to get 1 multiplied by the cosine of xy. So I get the cosine of x times y plus, and then I have x multiplied by the derivative of the cosine of x times y. So for this I have to use the chain rule. The derivative of cosine is minus sine of xy multiplied by the derivative of xy with respect to x, which is a factor of y. And then I close the bracket. So I can tidy this up and say that I have the cosine of xy minus x times y, bringing this y out here to the front, multiplied by the sine of xy. And I can also introduce some new notation here. I can say the derivative, partial derivative of f with respect to x. I can also write it as f, the function name, with a small subscript x. That's the variable that I'm differentiating with respect to. So this notation just means the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Now, what I have obtained after having differentiated this once is a function which still depends upon x, so it is an immediate thing to say that we can consider the derivative of this with respect to x again. So we can work out d2f, the second derivative. So this is the derivative d by dx of df dx. And this is d2f by dx squared. And to get the result of this, I have to differentiate all of this with respect to x. So I'm going to pause, make myself some room, and if you want, you're welcome to try to calculate it before I carry on with the calculation. So the second derivative that we want to now calculate is the derivative of this with respect to x. So when we have the first term, this is the derivative of the cosine of x multiplied by effectively a constant for a partial derivative with respect to x. And here again we have an x dependence here and the next dependence here, so we have to use the product rule to carry out this differentiation. So we see that what we're going to get is from the cosine, we're going to get minus sine, and we're going to get a factor of y to come outside, so that's minus y sine of xy. And then using the product rule to differentiate this, the first time we just get rid of the x, reduce it, so we have minus y sine xy. And then from the x dependence in here, we are going to get minus x. The sine is going to become a cosine, and we're going to pull out this factor of y here. So this will make this y squared. So it is minus x y squared, the cosine of x times y. We note that these first two terms are identical, so therefore what we have is minus 2y sine xy minus xy squared times the cosine of xy. 
And at this stage, I'll pause and make some room. And to introduce some further notation, in the same way that we said that we can write the partial derivative of f with respect to x as f with an x subscript to the right of it, we can write the second derivative as f here with two x subscripts, each one showing that you have differentiated with respect to x. So that is a standard result that we can calculate and it's easy to imagine how one can calculate the partial derivative of the same function with respect to y. So what I'm going to do is do that on the next slide and you can also consider doing this um, yourself, work out the partial derivative of the first and second one before, with, with respect to y before I show you. So to remind ourselves, the function that we are considering is a function of two variables, x and y, and it is x multiplied by the cosine of x times y. And to calculate the partial derivative with respect to y, which we can write as f with a y subscript, or we can write it as df dy, what we do is we look at our function, we see where the y dependence is, here it is only in the argument of the cosine, so the x is effectively for the y derivative a constant multiplying this cosine. So we have x times the derivative of cosine is minus sine, so I'll make it minus x times the sine of x times y. And if I differentiate the cosine of xy with respect to y, I'm going to pull out a factor of x here, so effectively all I have to do is say that this is minus x squared times the sine of xy. So at this stage we can work out what the second derivative is, and the second derivative is f with two y subscripts, or equivalently d2f by dy squared. These are equivalent notation, and this means the derivative with respect to y of the derivative of f with respect to y. So, we look at our result for the first derivative, which I've written here, and we see that again, this has only got a y dependence in the argument of the sine function. So what I'm going to get when I differentiate this is I'm going to get that the derivative with respect to y twice is we have a minus sign, we have x and it is initially squared but when we differentiate this with respect to y we're going to pull out another factor of x so I can immediately write down minus x cubed times the cosine, that is the derivative of sine of x multiplied by y and that is our answer for the second derivative and it is easy to imagine that you could in the same way calculate third or fourth or fifth derivatives. However, there is something new that we can do. We could have calculated, for example, the derivative with respect to x, and that would be a function of x and y, and then we could calculate the derivative of that with respect to y. And this is what is called a mixed partial derivative. And I'm going to look at that on the next slide. So up to now in this video, we've been considering this function of two variables here, and we've differentiated it with respect to x using these two different notations here for it, and we've also differentiated it with respect to y. We've also looked at higher derivatives just with respect to x and just with respect to y, but what I want to do now is I want to calculate the mixed higher derivative. I want to take the derivative here with respect to x and differentiate this with respect to y. So, what I'm going to be considering is to introduce the notation, the derivative with respect to y of the derivative with respect to x, and I can write that, as you would probably expect, as d2f, and then on the bottom I've got two different variables, y and x, so I write them in the order that they appear here on 
the left hand side I put the one that I differentiate with uh, the sec respect to the second time onto the left and the one that I first differentiate with respect to here on the right. But I can also use notation like this. So a moment ago we said that the derivative with respect to x can be written as f with an x subscript. And now when we want to differentiate this with respect to y, it's quite natural perhaps to just put a y subscript here. So notice here the difference in the ordering. Here, the term that is to the left is what we differentiate with respect to first. And then the things that come further to the right are things that we differentiate with respect to later on. Here, we differentiate first with respect to this and then secondly with respect to this. So what I want to do now is I want to calculate d2f by dy by dx here and this is the derivative with respect to y of the derivative with respect to x which we've already worked out was this. So this is the cosine of x times y minus xy times the sine of xy, close brackets. So what I'm going to do is make some room and calculate this second order mixed partial derivative. So what I'm going to get here is I'm going to differentiate this with respect to y, which means that I'm going to have to pull an x out of here and turn the cosine into minus sine. And then here, because y occurs in two different places, I'm going to have to use the product rule. So what I'm going to get is minus x times the sine of xy, which follows from differentiating this with respect to y. The x behaves just like a constant, and I can pull it outside. And then here, as I've said, I have to use the product rule. So I'm going to get minus, I'm differentiating now with respect to y, so I'm left, first of all, with just minus x sine xy. And then when I differentiate this part here with respect to y using the product rule, I'm going to pull another factor of x out, which will multiply this and give me an x squared. And the sine is going to become a cosine. So I'm going to get minus x squared y cosine of x y. And that looks like my final result, but I can simplify it a little bit because I see that this term here and this term here are exactly the same. So I get minus 2x sine of x y minus x squared times the cosine of x y. And this is our final result for the derivative with respect to x, which is then in turn differentiated with respect to y. Now, there is a standard result um, for smooth continuous functions about the equality of mixed partial derivatives. And this tells us that the derivative first with respect to x followed by the derivative with respect to y is the same as if you were to do the differentiation in the opposite order. So for smooth, continuous functions, it does not matter which order you carry out your partial derivatives in. So I'll make some room, write that out, and I would encourage you to check this yourselves for this example. So, so note, check that the derivative first with respect to x and then with respect to y is equal to the derivative first with respect to y and then with respect to x for this example. And this is, as I said, called equality of mixed partial derivatives.